So for those with slightly higher power aspirations, we need to start looking at different internal mods in the engine. So we're discussing the 1.8T 20 valve again. We've done a series of articles and videos on this very special engine. And specifically in this video, we're going to be looking at choosing rods. You've got I-beam and H-beam, so which is the most appropriate? Does it always make sense to get the strongest components you can in your project? So we're going to look at the pros and cons of those. We're also going to be discussing the wrist pins, which is an area a lot of people get unstuck. There's two different sides. So we're going to discuss the 19 and the 20 millimeter wrist pins and just help you to make informed choices so you don't end up buying parts that aren't appropriate for your specific engine. H-beam rods, generally speaking, are more robust. They can withstand the extremes of a performance engine. So they're probably the option that most people would think about fitting in a 1.8T project. But you've also got the option of a tapered H-beam, which saves weight at the reciprocating end of the rod. And that also provides increased clearance for boxed pistons. So they strike a good balance between strength and durability. And you also get weight reduction benefits from that as well which enhances the engine's ability to rev and deliver the power that you want. The straight H-beams are really engineered specifically for strength, so they're slightly heavier. But in high performance applications, most people will take strength over weight saving. But again, it depends on your aims and your aspirations for your project. So please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on rod choices for the 1.8T engine. What did you go for? Why did you choose it? And how are you getting on with that? We can't really talk about changing the rods and going into the engine without talking about the wrist pins, the essential connection within the engine connecting the rods to the pistons. The wrist pins take the brunt of the forces generated in the compressive loads that are going on inside the engine during the combustion process. And as far as the OEM ones go, most people will look to replace those with better performance alternatives. So you would look at what material the wrist pin is made of and also the diameter. So the 19 millimeter or 20 millimeter wrist pins, obviously they're not interchangeable. You don't want gap. You don't want to be trying to stretch a small one onto a big one or, or vice versa. It's just going to cause all sorts of problems. So do take that measurement. I've seen a lot of people get caught out and I've had feedback from people on the previous video we did on the 1.8T engine who've had issues with the wrist pins and have basically ordered the wrong parts. So generally when I've spoken to tuners and and when we start looking at modifying and upgrading this engine, the 20 millimeter pins are larger. They are better able to withstand those higher pressures and they tolerate higher amounts of tuning. So generally the 20 millimeter pins are the ones that you should go for, unless you've got a specific need to stick with the 19 millimeters, i.e. you couldn't be bothered to upgrade the other components and you just want something that will mate to it. So you've got mild steel and tall grade steel. There's various different grades around. The tall ones, the better steel, are generally about $100, $120, $130 pounds more than the softer ones, but they are really worth that investment. It's not a corner that you really want to cut when you start tuning your 1.8T engine. So bear that in mind when you're going out, you will get what you pay for. And generally, if you buy cheap, you end up buying twice at some point down the line in the near future. So most of the large port 1.8Ts have the larger wrist pin, the 20 millimeter size, and most of the small ports have the 19 millimeter. So that's a good rule of thumb, but as with anything I've said in this video, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. There's exceptions to the rules, so do your research. Just be aware of those differences so you don't get caught out when you start buying parts. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already because we would hate you to miss out. If you can boot that like button, that really does help us to get out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.